During the height of the July unrest, some Durban communities felt they had no choice but to take the law into their own hands. We'll never forget how we crossed to Imtiaz Syed, the chairperson of the Itawini Community Police Forum, in the middle of a street in the city. Syed relayed to us the realities of the destruction on the ground and how residents took up arms to protect themselves, especially when police were completely outnumbered. It, it was definitely a sobering moment. Syed is back on the line with us today to reflect on that time. Syed, I remember because I spoke to you and it was a scary time for all of us in the country. Have you recovered? And what are the other instances of when the community has come together? I think um, uh, when we're speaking about recovered, we've still got a very, very long way to go as a nation in terms of actually recovering from what had transpired. I think that there needs to be major discussions as to how we move forward and how do we get going as a society. Um, the race issue is becoming something of great concern to us. Um, and, and, and that being fueled by obviously we've got the local government elections coming along. Um, so that brings us to try and start resolving our issues amongst ourselves and start moving ahead. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> that's where really we are at this time. Uh, but I think in terms of recovery, we haven't as yet. Uh, there's a lot of damage control that needs to be done. There's a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done. A lot of discussions that need to go on. And, uh, yeah, we need to move ahead. Where, when we've spoken to communities around the country, there's a lot of talk about how the police are under-resourced. And so communities are having to really pull, uh, pull their own weight. How are you guys going about it? And what kind of initiatives are you involved in mainly when it comes to policing your communities? I think the most important thing and what we've learned from uh, the unrest is unity is, is, is where we need to be. And if we're not united in what we do, we're not going to achieve anything. That's number one. I think from the side of the Community Policing Forum, they've in, we've engaged now in the Community in Blue strategy. It is taking us some time to get it off the ground and get it going properly in the, in the place, in the space that it wants to be. But the one thing when we're speaking about police being under-resourced, we've got to realize and understand that police deal with crime in its normality. And these were abnormal times, utter madness. Um, and for us to expect our standard policing strategies to be working in that time really doesn't work. So as the CPF, we're lobbying for there to be a contingency plan in case these sorts of things happen. And they need to be specialized uh, operational plans on the side of SAPS and government by far and large to start dealing with these issues and how do we move forward as society. And what is the role clearly defined by government as to what is the role society needs to play when these things arise and what are their roles and how do they respond to it and how do we get going? So those are great concerns for us. I mean, vigilantism um, did happen and, and, and it's something that we need to speak to and we need to address. Uh, we need to have emergency response plans within communities. We've actually started identifying schools and, 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 and uh, parks and, and, and areas that we can create as safe zones for the communities that were left in fear. And uh, I think those are the things that we need to start moving ahead with. So there needs to be a clear understanding and a clear operational plan as to how we move forward. Uh, moving forward, how do we make sure that we don't have more situations where uh, community policing turns into acts of vigilante justice along the lines of race or social structure? I think when we're speaking about community policing in its true form, meaning the CPFs, we're quite clear in our understanding that our space is not to be vigilantes and not to operate in that space. And I think there's been a lot of sensitivity around the issue of CPFs and where were they, were they engaged, were they giving guidelines and all of that. So I think it's important for the CPFs to be engaged. We're asking every single community to engage with their CPFs if you want to be mobilized against uh, unrest and those kinds of things. And operational plans need to be drafted and clearly defined by the SAPS so that there's a clear understanding between SAPS law enforcement and all government agencies, uh, especially the Department of Community Safety and Liaison, um, wherein we now clearly identify our spaces and what we should and should not be doing during these, these uncertain times. I mean, these things can flare up in, in a matter of hours based on simple incidents across any type or any, any province for that matter. And we've got to be prepared and we've got to know how to start dealing with these things moving forward. Unfortunately, that's our normality these days.
MTS, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And thank you for the work that you did during the unrest. Uh, I think the, the, the members of your community uh, really need to say a big thank you for the work that you've done. MTS Syed, the chairperson of the Eteguini Community Police Forum, thank you for your time.